Bras are painful. They're literally like a boob prison. Hey guys, it's Sharon. Welcome to, you're welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for today's video because it is one of my new favorite videos to make. Last year, I started this series where honestly, I'm not entirely sure how to explain it or what I would call it, but it's kind of like things all girls do or things only girls understand. And you can actually find a playlist of every single video I've made on my channel. This is basically where I either react to like TikToks or articles about very stereotypical things that all girls do or only girls understand and I see if it really is something that all girls do and all girls understand you know I feel like me as a girl I have some credibility in seeing if it's true or not you know so that's what we're doing today if you want to see more videos like this give us a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below if you want to save my videos get a chance to be in them or even get to be shout out of the day make sure you follow me on my Instagram my Twitter and my TikTok and that's also how you get extra content and make sure you're subscribed and you're posting notifications are turned on. Today, I'm reading an article. It says 34 things all girls do but will never admit. 34 is a lot. I'm gonna cut this in two parts. So this is gonna be a two-part video. We are changing this from 34 things all girls do but never admit to 17 things all girls do but never admit. Look at that, guys. I divided it without using a calculator and I hate math. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> the bar is on the floor. Anyways, having a Pinterest wedding board full of dresses, color schemes and venues, even though you're nowhere near at that stage of getting engaged. A girl's got a dream, right? I, yes and no. I think this depends on the type of person. I've never been a big Pinterest user. I was more of like a Tumblr girl. Do I have a mood board of things I wanna do for my wedding? No. Do I have a bunch of TikToks saved about things I would like to do at my future wedding? Yes. So honestly, you kinda got me there. Oh my gosh, listen y'all, I love Halloween, right? A spooky wedding, but then I also also don't want it to be like spooky and terrifying. I don't want to be corny like a costume party either. So how do you make it aesthetic but also spooky? Definitely at the top of my list. But then I'm also like a spring wedding. So pretty. But fall colors. So pretty. I totally just exposed myself. Yes. I may not be getting married for another 20 years but uh it's in here. <laughs> Only washing your makeup brushes when your face is starting to look pretty grim. Am I really supposed to do this every single week when I would wear makeup? Y'all. It's kind of embarrassing how how little I would wash my makeup brushes and my makeup sponge. It'd get to the point where like I see my foundation clumping on the brush and I'd be like, maybe I should clean this. And to tell me I have to clean it once a week, you know how much effort it takes? You know what? Okay, it's not even a lot of effort. I think the most annoying part is like waiting for the brushes to dry. Granted, when I switched to like a beauty sponge, it was a lot easier. I'd always rinse it right after I used it and just let it dry and it was just so much better. But like brushes, that was so annoying. Yeah, I admit, something I should do, something I definitely didn't do. <laughs> squeezing every spot you get, even if it's only tiny. Also squeezing your boyfriend's spots because you're just that disgusting. No, that's where I draw the line. I can't pop other people's zits because they gross me out. They, uh, they make me so uncomfortable. I don't even like to say P-U-S. Like, I hate that word. Is it P-U-S or P-U-S-S? -S? Either way, I hate it. I cannot stand it. So me popping it on someone else's body, no. I don't even like to look at it when I pop it on my own body. I prefer blackheads and whiteheads. Those are more satisfying. The zits with the little gooey, disgusting white stuff, and then when you pop it, it gets on your mirror. Ugh. Do I do it? Yes, because I can't stand it on my face. Should you be doing it though? No, because then you're only leading to scarring and spreading that bacteria to other pores, leading to more acne. Which actually, by the way, I have a video on period acne, which is really just acne in general. Period acne is just worse. So go check it out if you're struggling with some acne. But anyways, I do draw the line for this one. Literally, Never, ever washing your bra. <laughs> yeah. And I've gotten better about this, you know. Um, <laughs> this is gonna sound so bad. I'll wear the same bra for like a week straight and then be like, okay, I should wash it. And sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And like, listen, we all have that one favorite bra. I had to get two of my favorite bra because I absolutely loved it so much. It's just like, when it comes around to having to wash it, you're like, but if I put it in the wash, then I'm not gonna have it. So that's literally why I bought two, but I still go a hot minute without washing. <laughs> It's just such a hassle, I don't know why, but also like free the nip, girl. 
sports bra, no bra. Bras are painful. They're literally like a boob prison. Only cleaning out your hairbrush once it's so full of hair that you literally can't get it through your hair anymore. Yeah, I definitely let my hair pile up on my hairbrush a lot. And I know I shouldn't. And it gets to the point where like, if I can see it and it looks like it's forming like a tiny little puppy or fur monster, or whatever, then like, I'm like, yeah, I absolutely need to take it off. And I know I should clean my hairbrushes at least like once a week. But honestly, that's such a hassle too. Because then I have to sit there and let the hairbrush dry and I need a hairbrush. But also, I'm in the middle of figuring out what type of hair I have and realizing I might not even need a hairbrush. I might just need a comb. So it's like, the struggle is real. And I'm also the type of person that instead of washing my hairbrushes, I would literally rather buy a new one. I don't know if it's lazy or annoying it is. <laughs> Using spit to wipe your smudged eyeliner. Ain't nobody got time to go to the bathroom with a cotton pad. Not even that though. It's just so much easier. If your hands are cleaned, it's my spit and my eyeliner. You know, it's my face. Using spit has its benefits. It's quick and easy. Sanitize before and after. Okay, anyways, then wipe. No need to literally go grab a cotton pad, use something disposable that's not even good for the environment, and then dispose of it. Why well, do all that? Although, I did buy these makeup remover towels, and I have been wanting to make a TikTok slash short slash reel about it. So much short content formats, I know. It's just this, like, microfiber towel that I use it to take off my makeup, and I've used it on foundation, concealer, eyeliner, mascara, everything, and it takes it all off with just water. Truly amazing. Okay, mental note that I need to show you guys about that, but it's just easier. Gathering all of your hair that falls out in the shower and rolling it into a pile that you'll inevitably, inevit, I hate this word, inevitably, <laughs> inevitably leave on the shower wall. This was me yesterday. Your girl loses a lot of hair in the shower. It's bad. I'm starting to wonder if it's damaged, if I just don't treat it with love as much as I should, but the difference is I put it on the bathroom wall and I leave it in a spot where like I need to see it and know that it's there. And then after I take it off and I roll it into like a little hairball and then it looks like a little pet. It's kind of scary. And have I forgotten it? Yes. And that sucks when you have roomies or people you live with and they just see half of your head on the freaking shower wall. My biggest fear is like doing that at like a hotel and forgetting it's there and the poor maid finding it. Luckily I haven't done it yet though, knock on wood. <laughs> Long hair girl problems. Having the tiniest chip in your nail polish and resolving to just peel the whole thing off. Totes cute, yeah, been there, done that. Especially when it's that really satisfying peel. When it all comes off in one piece, mm, chef's kiss, I love that, it is so satisfying. I really try not to do that though, especially if it's like cheap nail polish that just chips like little pieces. Instead, what I do and what I've gotten into the habit of doing is literally just taking my nail polish and just painting it over. I don't care if you see the little layer outline, at least you don't see the chip. So that's what I do. Because listen, I used to get my nails done like often. I used to keep up with them. I had acrylics. I'd always keep up with them. And then it just got so expensive. And then I just got so lazy. And I was like, now we're naked. Discreetly smelling your armpit in public to check if that BO smell is coming from you or smelly Steve. Always 110%, especially living in Florida with how hot, humid, and nasty it is out there. Y'all, I go on hot girl walks. The other day, it was 101 degrees. Me doing four miles outside in 101 degrees. You think I smell nice? I did not smell nice. <laughs> I usually pretend I'm like fixing my hair or looking at my hair and I'm like, <laughs> And I don't think there's anything wrong with checking to see if you smell. That just means that you care about your hygiene and there's nothing wrong with caring about your hygiene, which actually, funny to mention this, your girl has been switching and trying so many different deodorants. I've tried Native, I'm trying, I think, Tom's right now, I've tried Lush. I still cannot find a deodorant I like and I've been debating making some short content about that as well. So if you guys wanna see me doing a series where I try different deodorants so you don't have to, let your girl know. If you have recommendations though, please, also let your girl know. <laughs> Deciding to go on a diet on Monday, getting to 11.45 a.m. on said Monday, and joining the rest of the office in a jaunt to McDonald's. You only live once, right? This is one of my biggest character flaws is I'm gonna eat healthy, I'm gonna diet, and then I'm like, every day's a cheat day. It's okay. I'm not gonna live again. I might as well enjoy this piece of chocolate. I do it to myself every single freaking time. It's rough because you're like, I should treat myself, and then you just end up treating yourself way too much and all day, and it's like, suddenly you did not eat healthy at all. <laughs> Listen, it's the little things in life that count. Reward yourself, it's okay. <laughs> Only fake tanning the bits of skin you can actually see. What's the point in doing my back if no one's gonna see it? I 
actually don't really relate to this one because I've never had a fake tan. I wanted to try it, but it also freaks me out and I'm paranoid that I'm gonna end up being like orange or something. But why would you not fake tan your back? Like if you're in a swimsuit and your hair is up, for example, or you have short hair, why wouldn't you tan your back? Also, what are you, what are you tanning if your back isn't a part of it? When I picture like fake tanning or like self tanning, I just picture you wearing like a bandeau and underwear and tanning everything except those parts or you go nude and tan those parts, right? So why is the back not getting tanned? Like why wouldn't you tan your back? I need answers now. <laughs> One of the grossest, albeit totally true things girls do but won't admit is enjoying plucking out ingrown hairs no matter where on the body they are. There is something so satisfying about doing this and I don't know why I have one on like my hip bone and every couple of months I'm like are you there I want to pick at you I don't know why <laughs> totally exposing myself it's just satisfying again I would compare this to like popping a zit or like a black head or a white head it is just satisfying to get it out granted should you be plucking out ingrown hairs squeezing them out I don't know I'm gonna do it anyways maybe I shouldn't but who's stopping me <laughs> totally not giving a sh when a piece of food falls into your cleavage and eating it anyway. You gross human being. Listen, I don't think that's gross. It's my cleavage. The food is going inside my body and it fell in between my boobies. I'm gonna eat it with my mouth. Listen, if I'm trying to eat something and it fell into someone else's cleavage, I don't know how it did that. If it just like flew and landed in someone else's shirt, I'm not gonna reach in their shirt and eat it. But if it fell into mine, yeah, absolutely. It's a snack for later even. <laughs> what am I gonna do, leave it there? Let it get stuck to my chest? Absolutely not. I'm not letting food go to waste. <laughs> Immediately taking your bra off as soon as you get home. And I will actually top this taking your bra off as soon as you get in the car. <laughs> Again, boob prison. Bras suck, especially if you got a bra with underwire or especially if your bra is like too tight or their straps are too tight or something, like they're the worst. I'm just saying I stopped wearing wired bras and my back stopped hurting as much as it did before. Coincidence? I think not. So yes, those bras are coming off the second I'm in the comfort of my own space, my car, my house, whatever it may be. And you know, I feel like I wear a bra for others. I don't want people to see my nipples for free. That's literally the only reason why I wear a bra. If you're gonna see nip, you're gonna pay me. So if there's no one to look at home, off she goes. <laughs> Only shaving your ankles if your skinny jeans are a tad too short. Oh no, girl. 2022, we not shaving for anyone else except for ourselves. If you want to have some hairy ankles, so be it. <laughs> Guys can be super hairy. Guys have hair everywhere on their freaking body, every nook and cranny. But suddenly, if we have hair in every nook and cranny, we're disgusting. We're not as attractive. Body hair is natural. Shaving is such a process. Shaving is such a hassle. And that's exactly why I got laser hair removal. You know how annoying it is to shave legs when you're Hispanic? That thick, dark body hair, oh, it was a nightmare. So I'm really just saying your body hair is a preference to you. If you wanna shave, go for it. If you don't wanna shave your ankles, you don't have to sis. <laughs> Randomly grabbing your boobs just because, yes. Why else are they there? Sometimes my hands are cold and I need to warm them up. It's either I grab my boobs just because or I stick them in between my thighs for them to warm up. <laughs> and I don't know why, like you'll literally just be chilling and then all of a sudden you're holding your own boob and it's like, how did I get here? I don't know. It's just one of those things. I guess you you can like equivalent to like when guys just stick their hands in their pants. Same thing, just holding my booby. What's wrong with that? And the last one for part one says, sitting in the hairdresser's chair and wondering if you've always looked like Voldemort's ugly little sister. <laughs> Being Voldemort's ugly sibling, that's rough. Listen, my thing is, I have really long, dark hair, right? When I sit in the hairdresser's chair and it's after they've washed and soaked my hair, I look like the girl from The Ring. The girl that comes out from that TV screen, that is me in the hairdresser's chair, especially when they put my hair to the front to try and cut them and like make it even or whatever. I look terrifying. I literally look like, oh my gosh, what is that thing from the Adams family? Cousin it, me, me, at least. It's not Voldemort's little sister, right? But now, if you're looking like Voldemort's little sister, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I absolutely love these videos. They're always so fun. And I always feel like I get called out and exposed. This one more than the others. This one, I'd say, yeah, I actually do a lot of these. A lot of these aren't as stereotypical as I thought they might be. Like, girls take 10 hours getting ready. I was expecting stuff like that, you know? But either way, I want to know what you think. Which one of these did you think 
think was the most relatable and which did you think was like so out of the blue not at all relatable that being said if you want to binge some more of these videos before part two is up I definitely recommend binging the playlist on my channel things only girls understand and that's where you'll get every other episode that's essentially like this TikToks, articles whatever it may be now shout out of the day goes to me on Instagram thank you so so much if you would like to be shout out of the day just follow me on my Instagram and stay active and if you would like to see some tea or even some girl talks I definitely recommend checking those out on my channel as well I have also period help and period horror stories and all that good stuff lots of tea on this channel that being said if there's a video you want to see definitely make sure to leave that in the comments as well and make sure you're subscribed and those post notifications are turned on but that being said I will see you guys with a part two for this very soon but we gotta let this one marinate you know <laughs> okay I need to stop bye <laughs>